Okay, now I would like us to go back and think about fold right, right? The, the first ex example that we looked at. And I want us to recall that that version is not tail call optimized. So um, this is the, the generalized pattern. And if you recall, this is the um, tail call optimization that we came up with. So um, what we can do is that folds right, we can implement fold right according to this um, optimization. Um, so this is the, the, the general pattern I gave you. And this is how fold right looks if we apply that. Okay. And notice that now fold right is a bit more complicated in its algorithm, but because we generalize this, um, this behavior and, and encapsulated in fold right, now any, now any function that uses fold right is already tail call optimized, which is great. Uh, so if you think about your homework assignment, that is a really good, um, you know, if something is not fold is not tail call recursive, then think that it might be a good candidate to use fold right, or it is a good candidate to, <laughs> to use fold right. You don't have to, I mean, you can, you can try to apply the algorithm directly, uh, but if you use fold right, it's, I think it's gonna be easier. Okay, so uh, now I want us to try to compare, and I just gonna, I'm just gonna show you a slide and not gonna run it directly, uh, but if I call, um, the unoptimized fold right and the optimized fold right, look at the speed difference. What we see is that uh, the tail recursive version runs 1.7 faster than the, non, the unoptimized fold right. Okay, so just by using, by encapsulating that behavior and, and storing it in fold right, now we just optimize that one. It has an immediate impact in any code that calls fold right versus a version that is hand, handwritten. Of course, if you hand write it and apply the optimization, then you get the benefit, you reap the benefits. Okay, so one thing you might be wondering is, okay, so yeah, so this is tail recursive. What if I combine two functions that are tail recursive, right? So one thing I could do is I could just apply fold left because as we, can, as we saw, if you even remember when I implemented map, I implemented the, another version that was called PAM, right? Which was just, map that reverses the list. So the question is, okay, so what if I call this map or in a generalized fashion, what if I use fold left, which is tail recursive and reverse, which is also tail recursive. Right, so we learned about um, reverse. We, we know that we implement that in terms of fold left as well, but reverse itself if you try your first implementation, that's also tail recursive. If you use fold left, that is tail recursive. So reverse is tail recursive, fold left is tail recursive. So the combination of both is tail recursive. So now the question is, what is faster? Is fold left plus reverse faster than just using fold right uh, that is directly implemented using this tail optimization, tail call optimization? Let's see. So. This is another way of implementing fold right, which is you just implement fold left and you reverse the list, right? Much simpler, but is it faster? What you can see is that rev plus fold is actually slower. It's like 1.3, uh, 0 0.7 times uh, the speed performance of the other one. Basically you can think of um, fold right as just um, your inlining. So everything is easier to run. So at least in the record version I tried, um, it was s slower, okay? It was slower than the original version, <laughs> the un unoptimized version, right? So you really lose all the benefits. So what you want is, um, you want to use the optimized version directly if you can, okay? So this is a very important uh, detail. I mean, it's not super important, but it's just a good note. It's saying, if you write fold right in an unoptimized way, that's even faster than calling the two tail call optimized versions. Okay, um, so that's about it. This is just to kind of give you a motivation as to another motivation. So if you're not convinced in terms of, um, you know, there might be an argument that you don't want to optimize code very early and so on. 
but yeah if you can if you can encapsulate it into just a single thing that is very easy a very small code base and you do optimize that that is a good way of thinking about optimization of course to make sense you should first convince yourself that this is actually impactful right whether you know if it's 0 0.7 uh, of something that runs for five milliseconds why would you bother anyway th just to sum it up we learn how to generalize two reduction patterns fold left and fold right we talked about how to uh, generalize code uh, to use these reduction patterns and how it can be used to uh, encapsulate behavior so therefore make maintenance a bit easier and also performance a bit easier. Uh, we saw that the, the difficulties of adding, of of adding, of of encapsulating this is that now you have to learn yet another thing. But if if in this case fold left and fold right, but if fold left and fold right are used a lot, then it makes makes sense. It actually becomes starts becoming a benefit. Right. So there so there's some some balance to be had in terms of over generalizing just makes code a bit more um, indirect, right? If you have everything in line, it kind of makes the code a bit more explicit. So that's that's something that people should think about when they're writing their own code. Um, and then finally, you have these two versions, which is, you know, it's kind of crystallizes the whole, everything we've learned in this lesson, which is really this balance between here you understand everything because the code is self-contained, right? But here you have to understand what fold are. Uh, in the end, you get the same lines of code, but this code is much more basic, right? It's just a few function calls. But you do need to understand what fold right is and so on. Okay, so I hope you had fun. This is one of my favorite lessons. Um, let me know if you have questions. Okay, have a good one.